In nine minutes or less, here's how to make this. Start by snapping the cube to the grid floor and then setting the height of the cube to three meters. Then push S shift Z to scale on every axis except the Z. Then move the camera inside the box by hitting control alt number pad zero and then just level the rotation of the camera. Add a couple of loop cuts to the box with control R then select that face with three, extrude it out and delete the face. Now go to the world settings, change the color to sky texture, cycles renderer, GPU, drop the exposure by three stops. Then I'm going to rotate the sun until I've got some light coming in from the right hand side. Now we need assets to decorate our room. There's a lot of places you could get it, but the easiest place is the polygon add-on, which lets you search download and import with one click. A link to download the add-on is in the description. Most of the assets require credits, but if you type in free, then you can also find 100 assets that you can download for free. The texture is stretching because we haven't set up UV coordinates yet. So first I'm going to apply the scale, then go to edit mode, U, smart UV project, okay. Then go to the UV image editor and I'm gonna scale this up until that plaster looks about right which I think is around four or five, something like that. Now the floor, I wanna give it a separate material. So I'm gonna select one face here, then hit shift G and select similar normals, which means it's now gonna select all the other faces that have the same direction. And I'm going to add another material underneath it and hit assign, then hit N again. And I'm gonna type in the texture that I'm looking for. I'm gonna go for a terracotta tile, but there's a bunch you could choose from. You can also preview a texture by hitting the little I there and that will download a low res preview so you can see how it looks in the scene before you buy it. But I happen to like the look of this one. So I'm going to purchase it and then hit apply. Now, if you ever notice what looks like the bump appears to be inverted, that is because it is because the normals of our object are incorrect. It should be blue on the inside, red on the outside. So I'm gonna select everything, all faces, control shift N, and it's now inverted uh, those normals to be facing inside, which means that now the bump is correct. Now we need models. I want this to look sort of like a hotel lobby kind of area. So I'm going to find, uh, yeah, just a bunch of chairs and coffee tables that we could use. Um, I've already purchased this one, but I'm just gonna hit download to download it again. And you can see that it's come in with the correct materials and it's ready to use, which is good. I also want some coffee tables. I'm just gonna type in, or actually I can use this uh, subcategory here for coffee tables. Uh, I'm gonna grab a couple of them. Uh, this one, import. Uh, I'm gonna put another one right next to this chair and I'm gonna use that one, import that. And then I'm gonna put another one right in the center here. So then I need, of course, some chairs, some other chairs to go around it. I like the look of this one here. By the way, if you ever wanna see a larger thumbnail, you can click a view larger thumbnail. Um, and if you wanna see how it looks on the website, you can do that as well. But I'll buy that one, import that. And a good rule of thumb for interior design is to stick to odd numbers. So I'm not gonna go with two chairs or four chairs. I'm gonna go with three. I'll put one right here. This one's got this kind of mesh backing that looks kind of appropriate for this uh, Mexican style themed hotel. Hopefully this styling is not insensitive to Mexicans. I don't know. It looks, uh, it looks rustic Hispanic. I don't know. It's actually quite trendy uh, in uh, interior design at the moment. So that's why I'm going for it. I'm also going to put a rug on the floor. So I'm going to look at my rugs over here. Oh, and if you ever find that a thumbnail isn't loading like this one here, it's a bug that we're trying to work out a fix for. But in the meantime, if you go to the top and then click on the cog wheel, this will load up the preferences and then just hit the button that says refresh data. And that will force reload every thumbnail on the page and it should fix the problem. So you can see as I build the scene how suspiciously quick this looks. 
And I never really realized until we built this, how much momentum I was losing by having to go to a browser, search, download a zip file, unzip it and import it every time I needed something for a scene. You get lost in menus, you forget what you were doing. So we designed this to solve that. It's simple, it's minimal, it stays hidden in the sidebar until you need something. And then you can search from a live database and download and import an asset within two clicks. And it sounds crazy, but it means that a scene like this can go from taking hours to minutes. So if you wanna give it a try using the 100 free assets that I mentioned at the start, click the link in the description to download the add-on now. The other thing I can do with the add-on is actually look for assets that I have previously downloaded or bought. So I can see I've got a bunch here. I've got these little cup things. Um, cups and ceramics of all type are very much on trend right now in uh, Archviz. Don't know why, or sorry, I guess just interior design in general, but just, I don't know, little bowls and things for people to put their keys. It just, I don't know, it makes it look like you've got good taste and aesthetics. So I'm gonna put a tray here. Trays are everywhere. It's called corralling objects. Put some more trays over here. It comes with three. I probably only want, yeah, I might go with the black and the red one. That'll be all right. Rotate them a little bit. That's good. I'm also gonna throw down some of these jugs here. Just gonna use this one jug, move that over there. And I also need some plants. So I'm gonna go back to the live website, which is this one here. Go to models, and then I'm going to click on plants. There's a bunch that we could choose from. I am looking specifically for a cactus. Yep, this one here. All right, that's one cactus. I'm gonna chuck another one over here just so that you know, you annoy the guests when they've got a drink in their hand, they go to put it on the table, they spike themselves. I don't know. There's always little cactuses and things in hotels and eh, just seems appropriate. All right, now by default, the plants come with just this sort of uh, very simple looking white pot, but we could make it a lot more interesting if we use some other decorations, which we've got here. I'm going to use, doo -doo -doo -doo. yeah, let's use one of these. Lovely. That looks a lot nicer and more appropriate for that cactus. I'll do another one here. All right, this uh, nice terracotta pot looks pretty appropriate, so I'll use that. A little bit small, but eh, no one's gonna know if we just uh, increase the scale a little bit. I'm gonna put my favorite plant over in the corner here. Most popular one across the website, it's uh, this one. The plant banjo fig, it's called. Nice and big. There it is. Let's just bring it into the light. We can see it in all its glory. There we go. Nice. I'm realizing that uh, <laughs> people like big assets. So we're working on uh, getting larger and larger assets for people's interiors since they obviously fill up more of the scene, which is generally what you want. This was the result up to this point. Uh, I didn't like staring out into the void, but I also didn't want to model a whole exterior. So I went looking for some solutions and I found this on Arc Daily. So I quickly modeled it using a plane, chopped it up with a solidify modifier, and then I applied a wood veneer to it and it works. Then I downloaded a simple backplate of some mountains, which when overexposed is just enough to hint that there is something out there, but nothing more. Next up, the wall was looking pretty bare, so I modeled a very crappy tapestry, then threw this core texture on it, which when scaled up enough, actually kind of looks plausible. Now we don't have any lamps on Polygon yet, so I took this cylinder, added some cuts, tapered it a little bit, and then applied an antique metal to it, and that was the final result. Obviously lots of third-party models, but that's called being a professional. Download the new Polygon add-on by clicking the link in the description. Thank you.